You just are stupid fucking hate, man. You just are stupid fucking hate. So you just are dirty, man. I need part you. Go fight, Jaden. Go fight. <laughs> It was one of those days where I was running for my life. Uh, make sure you stick around for the whole video to see how that turns out. Welcome to Road America. We are starting in P5 with a 207.83, and this race was all over the freaking place. Right off the bat, not a great launch. A very safe launch, though, uh, but we are going to lose two positions, so down to P7 before we reach the first corner. I'm fine with that. I believe I have the pace uh, to outrun my qualifying and possibly a few of these guys ahead of me, so I'm not too worried about that. I do end up going into the back of this VRS guy ahead of us as we go through corner two. I think the car in front of him kind of slowed down a lot and we both kind of got backed up. It happens sometimes. Nobody really got any incidents from that. We all come around there just fine. It does compromise my run just slightly and 14 is able to be right on my tail. So we're all taking super defensive lines into the big left hander at the bottom of the hill at the end of that straight. Uh, 14 actually manages to go around the outside really cleanly there. We're going to follow four through on the inside of the next corner, which is an uphill left-hander. We go a bit deep, makes a small amount of contact with 14, and then, yeah, I'm going to call this one net code. At this point, we basically get stuck and turned to the side, spin off uh, along with 14, so we both go off of the track, falling down from P7 to P14 uh, behind car number 14. So looking to put him into P14 by looking to put car number 14 into p14 bypassing car number 14 and you can see ahead we didn't actually lose that much time to some of the cars ahead of us there's like a group that's pretty close to us 14 goes super wide on the first corner of the second lap and we take that position effectively send i'm not going to say it all again but you know we sent him down to 14 whatever um catching up to p12 now in just a few corners getting right on his tail as we come onto this like parabolica situation on the back side of road america right on his tail avoid making contact by a miracle somehow end up sending it side by side with him but i know he's been breaking early into these corners so i feel i can outbreak him and sure enough we're going to send it up the inside and he actually manages to hold it around the outside for a second but thankfully he breaks and I swing across right in front of him so gaining that position up into P13 now as we come across to start the third lap and the group is kind of splitting up ahead of us people are starting to space out trying to ignore that and just focus on the car ahead of me which is this white and red car and he actually moves over to the side so Gives us a really nice slingshot. We soaked up that slipstream and then he moved out of the way. Moving up into P11 now, looking to make our way into the top 10. Car ahead goes extremely wide on the penultimate corner. We're going to send it around the outside of the final corner, heading on to the straight. Managed to get the move done before we even get onto the straight. He kind of backs out there and realizes that I have a better run. Uh, car number nine up ahead of us. We're gonna catch up to him over the course of a lap and put some pressure on him coming on to the back straight or the middle straight. I don't know what you call this. There's three straights on this track, but we get a really good run here. Looking to make a move up the inside and he decides to give it up, moving to around to the outside, going super deep, trying to outbreak us. Really just gonna outbreak himself and we will pick up P9. He then gets kind of mixed up with that green guy behind, so that's gonna relieve any pressure that could have presented itself from behind us. We are now totally able to focus ahead. A bit of a gap to the cars ahead. This is P5 on the first corner of the next lap. He drives into the dirt, and upon rejoining, he's actually going to rejoin uh, right behind this Valvoline car, which is right ahead of us, so you can see him right there. And it's always nice when you see something like that happen, an opportunity for a better position presents itself. He makes a move immediately on that same lap uh, on the back straight, final straight, I don't know what you call that. And these guys are gonna end up fighting, which I love to see the side by side. I know that it's gonna end up pulling them further and further back towards me. Once again, going side by side slightly. And the car ahead of me just seems to really wanna stick his nose up everywhere he can, which I am a huge fan of. It helps me out a ton at this point. And by the end or middle of this lap, you'll see that we're basically right on the Valvoline car. So within just a couple, I think that was over the course of two laps and that huge gap completely diminished coming on to the last couple of turns, and we only have about three or four laps left at this point, looking to claim P8 from the Valvoline car here. Possibly a good run on the straight, breaking as late as we can. He seemed to break a little bit early there, and then he still misses the apex. So I think what happened was he broke early, realized it, tried to let off of his brake to make up for that speed, and then he didn't have enough weight at the front of his car to make that turn accurately as he ends up sending himself wide. We're going to sneak up the inside, heading into turn one on the next lap, and he doesn't really do much to fight that. He actually does very well to... Um, 
basically cut any losses here and lose just about as minimal time as he could while giving up that position. He is going to move to the inside, uh, same thing he was doing to the card ahead, but I know that he's not close enough to make a move, so I'm not really too worried about it. I am going to take a defensive line here, though, because he's going to have a good amount of slipstream, but he's not going to use it to his advantage. I think he knew that I was faster and was hoping that I would kind of tow him to the cars ahead, which I'm fine. I would love to do that for him and for myself. Pretty soon, the car ahead catches the car ahead of him, so that has turned into the battle now for, I'm in P8, so that's P7 and 6 up ahead of me. They go side by side into the left-hander at the bottom of the middle straight. I don't know these names, forgive me for this, guys. Uh, not able to make a move work there, but he is putting pressure, and once again, when you see this type of fighting, you see somebody defending like that, you're gonna catch, you're gonna, you're gonna close this gap, and sure enough, here we come, taking the racing line while both of them are taking very hardcore manipulated lines and uh coming through this very long right hander me and the car ahead of me are both going to have to compromise severely as the car ahead of us goes extremely slow through there so we really focus on our exit get right up on the tail of bows and i actually end up lifting as we come through this super fast sweeping right hander because i don't want to cause any incidents at this time we only have i think we're about to come across for the last lap in just a second and i know that he has he wants to get ahead of the car ahead of him my goal is just to stay attached and let that fight ensue and then hopefully pick up a free position as uh, one of them tries to make a pass or defense against the other. And we are going to lose a bit of time as we go onto that straight. He takes an outside line. As we pass the pits, though, we are going to pick up a position from somebody who had a drive-through penalty, trying to decide where to place our car here as they're side-by-side -side in turn one. We're going to follow car number four around the outside. Here's an outside perspective of that. And then it's really important that we outbreak car number nine here. I think we, uh, we end up taking this corner really nicely like losing minimal time through the corner but when you do that you kind of compromise your run out and sure enough that's what's going to happen he overslow or not overslows in the corner but slows down more than me gets a better run soaks up slipstream and actually sends it around the outside at the bottom of the hill props to him that was a great move i do think i left much too much space and that's something i'll have to fix in the future a couple of cars ahead of us this is p3 and p4 they are going to have a huge net code pit maneuver happen both of them go spinning off of the track at the perfect time you can see them right there i slow down extra to make sure Nothing happens. Red backs into nine as he tries to rejoin terribly. It opens up a gap on the inside for us, and we take it, getting the power down, breaking as late as we can on the inside there, and we will swoop from P7 all the way up to P4, just a few corners until the end of the race. There's a replay of me just barely surviving that. Uh, number nine, super unfortunate there, but he still did net positive one position as we picked up two positions there. Uh, just a couple of corners left, and we're actually gaining on Carr, who's card four who's now in a podium position and coming up the penultimate corner he's gonna miss the apex we get a much much better run it's imperative that we get a good run onto the straight here and we hesitate on the throttle i i was quiet so to let you hear it but yeah we hesitated onto the throttle there basically killed our run but i'm pretty happy with that result from p14 well starting from p5 down to p14 and then back up to p4 uh still shotting around the grid here are the results p4 we gained 0 0.08 safety rating and 41 i rating okay so this is where the drama is going to start this is uh a, i'm not going to show this entire race but we were stuck behind this guy for like three or four laps car number 14 here and on multiple occasions we would tuck to the inside and then he would follow us over and kind of block us off with an extremely late move just ignoring that my car was there in this instance uh, we make contact he then goes super deep here locks up his tires and we cut underneath him thinking that we had the road we um we actually end up making contact with him there again that was not intentional I, th I thought we had a lot more space there. I do end up driving him off the road there, and he was pretty upset about that. Uh, that whole sequence, I knew he was upset about, actually, as he had kind of been defending super aggressively, and I'm looking in my rear views, and I knew it was coming. Uh, as we're coming down to the bottom of this next little hill, and he's just not really going to break. He's in trying to wreck us, and... Well, we were able to avoid it in this instance. We probably could have done better to stay on the road, but it was a pretty spur-of-the-moment decision by me to pull off the road and try to not get anybody else involved in this. Um, it didn't end very well, and he was pretty upset about this as he was putting the blame on me for that entire scenario. Here's the voice chat. You're ridiculous, man. You're totally stupid. You're totally stupid fucking hate, man. No, dude. <laughs> we'll watch it back. We'll stay in the lobby after me, and we'll watch it back. You could die stupid fucking hate. I can't understand you. Now, he, to be fair, he did stay in the lobby after, but he pretty much just spammed um, angry messages in the chat. And 
eventually somebody else who sport who uh, spoke Portuguese was talking with him, who basically told him that he wrote, ran me off the road. Um, but there were some other guys who stayed back too. Does anybody mind being a second pair of eyes for this? I'll take a look. Yeah, I want to check it out too. Lap 11, turn one, two, heading into turn three, the downhill left-hander. Yeah, that's a pretty tough rejoin. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely like intentionally trying to wreck you. I protest it. Aiden, I will tell you, uh, after on lap 11, the downhill left-hander, you did kind of push him off track a bit more. Even yeah, he was already running a little bit wide, but he kind of just went into him. Looking back at it, I thought he went much farther in, in race. I do think I could have taken a sharper angle, like at the bottom of the hill. Yeah, that bit of contact is definitely on you, but you definitely defended too hard going into that. Thank you guys for sticking around. Always here for the team. Pretty wholesome moment at the end of that race, uh, not with Luis, but with uh, the other guys there. And um, hopping into the next race, we are starting on P3 with a 207.1. Luis was also in this race. He was starting at P11 with a 208.2. Um, and let's get right into it. Hopping off of the line, we are sticking to the inside, starting in P3. We've got somebody right super hot on our tail. It's hard to see, but this guy right here, Travis Peterson, really fast driver, probably fast enough to be in front of us, um, but per perhaps messed up his qualifying there. The conditions weren't perfect for this race, but everybody was doing pretty well. We managed to get around the first couple of corners with Basically, no drama whatsoever following P1 and 2 up ahead, so still sitting in our podium position. A lot of guys queued up right behind us as we come into the big left-hander, turn number 3 at the bottom of the hill, breaking just before the 3, a little bit early here. Uh, Travis goes flying through behind us, and then we get taken out from behind, unfortunately. Uh, I think Travis just broke a little bit too late, tried to evade us. Number 5 goes up our inside, and we have a little net code there. I think it would have been an, in an incident anyways, but... Either way, we get spun out and sent all the way down to P17, uh, getting in ahead of Travis right here as he slows down to let us through, which actually puts us up into P16 now. Uh, so Travis is behind us, who started P4. This guy up ahead of us, McLeod, started P2. So we have three of the top four guys, I believe, or three of the top five guys here, all in the back, riding uh, Travis is in P what 18 i'm in p16 and michael ahead of us is in p15 and that is subject to change of course because as we come around the last corner somebody up ahead is going to spin off onto the side of the track which will move all of us up one position so crossing the line now in p15 following michael through and i really did not want to fight michael i knew that we both had pace to move through the field and um was hoping that we could just do that together and it actually ended up going pretty well for us this is the second lap and there's a green car right ahead of michael slowing us both down quite a lot as he takes a really wide line through there coming into the sweeping right that leads to the downhill left hander turn seven or eight i think and he is going to pull over to the side let us both through so moving up into p14 michael now up into p13 ahead of us and uh, we will continue on our climb you can see the group ahead is not really going anywhere they're kind of like they're kind of really close to us even though we had that big accident we didn't lose a ton of time and that is in part because there was so much fighting going on in that group that we were very easily able to catch up by just running even just one clean lap I think at this point this is the end of lap two so we've only actually ran one full lap and we're pretty much right back on top of everybody you can see just how many cars are in vision of us uh hoping to get around people as smoothly as possible and lose as minimal time this is definitely going to help as car number 17 pulls over uh luis up ahead is getting bumped by car number six no touch me man please yeah no act no act yeah he was pretty active on the mic and he was also the cause of this entire group kind of backing them all up which i was super thankful for look at that he's he was defending all over the place and it was allowing us to gain a lot of time back to the rest of the field this is just a lap later and you can see we are edging ever closer somebody slides off ahead so we'll move up one position make that two positions make that three positions as this guy is sliding backwards we'll take a look back real quick at what exactly happened 14 slides out on his own um this is car number 11 slides out on his own as well bounces backwards across the track and takes out car number eight who uh we pick up that position from as well as we cross right here and that moves us all the way up into p10 so already the situation was feeling pretty good we're coming across to start lap four or to start lap uh, three excuse me so we're still super early in the race it's 12 laps overall over the course of the entire race up ahead Luis is it looks like he tries to pit this guy and then locks up his brakes and then he calls him a dirty driver 
13 meters. As that was happening, the two cars behind are right up behind each other, and car number seven is going to run into the car ahead of him a couple times, send him off the track. So everybody was really just fighting tooth and nail. By the time we rejoin, we're actually going to pick up that position. So that moves us now up into P9 at the start of lap three. Already fought back for six positions, and we're going to hopefully continue on this trend, looking to regain a top, I would say a top five position. Felt realistic at this point. This is the start of the next lap, and you can see Mike up ahead is riding the tail of somebody and then up ahead of him uh, Luis is still fighting with that guy so everybody will slowly be pulled back towards us eventually we know we just have to continue to drive cleanly and uh, let's put in some decent laps Michael looking for a really good move there the silver car allowing him space as Michael finds it on the inside just about not allowing him space but pulls out once he realizes that Michael is there so he will move up ahead of us and we are trying to get a move done pretty uh pretty soon as well because we don't want to lose touch to michael we know that he's fast and uh, we want to stay on that we are going to get a little bit of oversteer as we come over that little crested left hander which isn't going to allow us a position there now this entire time that that is going down luis is absolutely fighting tooth and nail which to be fair he has every single right to it's racing you can of course defend or attack um sometimes i will say it's smarter not to do one or the other uh just to to keep the length of the race in mind. This is only lap three, but I'm not upset about it as everybody is really getting closer and closer to me. Our, our main target right now is this car number 16 who gets a lot of oversteer there. We try and go around the outside, which turns into the inside for the next corner. Go side by side with them up the sweeping left-hander coming towards the final corner and we're gonna back out, let him go ahead of us. And then he gets a very strange line here. We have to back up a lot. We actually take a hit from behind as uh, this guy appears seemingly out of nowhere and gives us a little bump on our side. He then has to pull into the pit lane though. So we're actually not going to lose a position from that as I'm pretty sure he had a penalty uh, perhaps from the amount of incident points. He also seemed to be coming in and out of existence. So I'm not sure it, uh, what all was happening there. Either way, we basically didn't lose any positions there. However, we did lose a ton of time. You can see the gap ahead of the car, ahead of me growing sub sub uh, sub uh, substantially is the word um, that I was trying to say there. Travis, we're going to let him go on the inside here. I didn't really want to fight this. Um, and then he, look at this move, my god, sending it up the inside of car number 16. I wish I had had a better run onto that straight as perhaps that could have been me, but sadly it's not. So I'm going to stay behind number 16. Now down to P10, I believe this is, back down to P10. Looking for a move up the inside of car number 16. Turns to the outside for this next corner. Very difficult to make that work when you're on the outside. I uh, fall back, let him through there, and settle behind once again. Hoping to get a move done, perhaps at the end of this straight, as there is a really big braking zone. And we need to get a move done soon. We've lost quite a bit of time now to that group up ahead. Luis is still going to be challenging this guy, though. Sending it up the, uh, what actually is the outside for this right-hander. They're going to make contact, leading Luis to slide off and then get on to voice chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. As we're approaching the corner, looking for a move up the inside originally, but seeing the smoke, we decide to back out and play this one a bit safer. Ridiculous, man. While that was happening, car number seven ended up driving into the dirt. This was the car who was behind Luis, and as he rejoins, a couple of cars are going to have to slow down, do very well. Car number 12 actually does extremely well there to slow down and not make contact. They go three wide slightly, uh, slowing all of them down, and then you can see we are right here following them through. So now up into P9, and the car ahead of us breaks really dang hard for this final corner, which throws our line off severely, so we're not going to be able to look for a move on this straight. Car number seven has a drive through penalty for incidents, and we take P8. Hey, Mitchell, you got all dirty, man. Incredible, man. Incredible. I depart you. The other driver did very well not to respond to Luis, immediately blaming him for that accident. And we are about halfway through uh, the race at this point. This is lap seven, about halfway through the lap as well. Still looking for a move on this car number 16 and struggling to find it. Um, he doesn't seem to get on the throttle right there. Totally my fault, of course. Uh, I would call that a Lance Stroll moment, 100% on me. Um, I expected him to get on the throttle a little bit more than that. Car number six spun out ahead, and I think this is actually why he wasn't getting on the throttle, because he was witnessing this accident and probably slowing down for it. It just kind of caught me off guard because his brake lights didn't actually go on there. Um, as uh, Luis passes through, he's got something to say, of course. Congratulations, motherfucker. Go, go, go. Give me hasty green, guys. 
At this point, we are up into P5, following behind Travis after that entire debacle on the last lap. And uh, we know Travis is fast. We've got a few more laps left. And the car ahead of Travis is Jacob Jung, who actually stayed behind and um, talked with us through that incident on the last lap that we, or the last race, excuse me, that we had with Louise. And we are, so we're riding P3, 4, and 5 with Jacob in the front. Travis is going to move up the inside as Jacob goes a bit wide around the super long right-hander. We're going to tuck behind Jacob, not wanting to do anything super aggressive. I feel like everybody has been through enough in this race. I didn't want to cause any incidents or be involved in any incidents. I just wanted to finish this race out. However, um, I noticed that Luis was behind me. Go fight, Jaden. Go fight. <laughs> And as diabolical as his little villain laugh was, um, I wasn't super worried about him catching me, if we're being honest. I think that I could pretty easily pull away. I did feel like I may have to make a move on Jung at some point, but I really wasn't worried about that. Jung's actually really fast as well, so I, I was really just kind of riding my own pace at this point. Uh, we, we had put in 208 kind of throughout this entire race, but we had also been in some pretty heavy traffic, so I know that as soon as we get clean air will probably start to run some 207s or at least low 208s we're going to look for a move up the inside of jung uh, as we come across this is with three laps left so we're going to break a little bit later and he is going to tuck in right behind us so very well on both of our parts i feel like to get a clean move done there he looks up the inside of the next corner but i think my breaking point was slightly further back i do go a little bit wide around the corner but still manage to keep up some pretty high speed uh, losing a bit of time to travis up ahead but we are still in the slipstream and jung is in our slipstream as well so we're going to take a semi-defensive line there's luis that's the uh, gap to him behind us and by the time we come around to about halfway finish out this lap we are starting to gain a little bit of time on travis the straight of course is going to be where you probably gain the most time as you get sucked all the way up to the guy ahead of you and sure enough here we are riding up right behind him and i, I didn't want to do anything to him here we've been through enough travis you're, you're all good i'm not doing nothing so yeah even though we probably could have gone for a move. I actually back off a bit early, lift up, and I just want both of us to just drive at our at pace, basically. Uh, putting a 208.2 for our last lap, which I think was our best lap so far in this race. I had done a lot of fighting, and as we come around to round out this lap, Travis actually pulls to the outside for the next corner and slows down, allowing me the space on the inside and the speed to go on ahead of him. And I do take that position. I don't want to slow down and like cause any sort of weird pile up between myself and Jung. So up into P3 now, we are in a podium position and Travis is just following us through. He did this because of the incident on lap one, which was partially his fault, but I mean, honestly, it was partially everyone's. I appreciate that, Aiden, but you need to finish that. Thank you, man. Now, of course, I will take that position, but had he not done that, I definitely, I wouldn't have gone for a move on him. I was fine with finishing behind him. And this was actually the last lap, so we were just going to round this out in this order. All of our little red, white, and blue cars coming across the Good line. Job, Sorry again for that uh, crash meeting the race. Nah, there is that other car flying through. There's a lot going on there. Good race, man. Shout out to Johan who watches our YouTube. I don't know if I said that name right. I hope that I did. Uh, somehow we managed to, yeah, climb our way back up from P to P3 from P16. Lost safety rating, of course, but we gained some I rating. A super exciting race, super unfortunate for a lot of different people. We managed to kind of get on the luckier side of that one, though. And here are the results. Feel free to look at them. Um, pause if you would like to. And also, please consider checking out some of my other videos on my channel. Help me out a lot, and thank you guys so much. Until next time.